I want to look at a particular op-amp circuit, but now I want to talk about one that has a resistor, inductor, and capacitor in, in this various structure. And in this case, also to do this in what will turn out to be a bandpass filter. But in this case, now I'm going to have two resistors, R1 and R2, which nominally will help set some of the gain for the structure sort of the bandpass gain of it, but then I'm going to have the L and the L and the C, so the inductor and the capacitor are going to have some effect in the structure as well. So, and again, it's kind of to start looking at what different properties we might see in, in such a structure. Okay. So I would look at, I could still figure out what my transfer function is. It's going to be the negative of, well, this conductance is in the, in the denominator, as I expected, so just the one term and three other terms in the numerator. <laughs> and all three are in parallel, so it's a parallel combination of R2, SL, and 1 over SC. And you think, okay, that, that works. Well, that looks something along the lines of this function, which then I can expand out through multiplying by R2 and L into this particular term. And you think, okay, now I go from here, and this is the classic thing, is to go, how do I take this and get this into a little bit more of a lower entropy form. Okay, And so what that means is I want to be able to look at certain responses and figure out how do I get this into a more canonical structure. Eventually this is going to fall into S squared tau squared, say a tau over Q plus 1 in the denominator. Well how am I going to, how does that work out so I can kind of think about this? Well I know I've got an R2 so I probably want to divide through by that. And that actually works, so the R2 goes out of here, the R2 goes out here, and it goes underneath the L, which is very useful because then it's LC, which is a pretty typical way. We know that that would be related to a times constant squared. We know that the L over R also gives me something, both, both a time constant, but also tends to be not an uncommon thing to see for a tau over Q. And then plus one kind of allows us to have that normalization that we would expect from a second order form that we might be working with. And so as a result, we can kind of reform it to this way, which then allows us to say, ah, oh, yeah, the, the tau square is L over C. Tau turns out to be one microsecond out of the structure. Great. Um, again, you see a one millihenry and one nanofarad. So there you go. You can then figure out your tau over Q. And over Q here is R2 times L over tau over L, R2 over C squared is C over L. And you might go, okay, that's an interesting computing, but something to notice here. When you typically talk about um, L over C, you get some very interesting numbers here. And one of the things that you get when you see that is you get a very you get a particular resistance. You get a particular kind of structure that comes out of this. And, and so that this gets to be kind of fun here. And so what we'd end up getting with the values that we're working with is a value of 2. Um, because when you actually look at LC, L over C turns out to be the units of resistance. And so it's kind of interesting to see what that number would be in this case. And actually in this particular case, the number I would get if I looked at L divided by C is basically 1 kilo ohm very interesting structure. So what I get is basically R2 over that value and I can pull this out. So then I could look at this both in terms of its frequency response which gives me a nice structure with a Q peak of 2 and things then very uh, very typical phase plot. Notice the phase plot sharpened up from say typical bandpass from separated pole bandpass response. It's got much much sharper and everything happens right around the center frequency. Center frequency is right about 180 degree, is right at 180 degree phase. Everything makes sense. I can also imagine doing this for a step response, and things do get a hair bit messier. Fortunately, we do have this wonderful transform between time and frequency in the S domain. And so that does give you something for V out. It's a little bit messier, but you can look at the time responses in this. And so, and so looking at this whole structure, you have a huge whole sort of opportunity in terms of. Uh, being able to build band passes, but of all sorts of cues of different gains, um, and there's a straightforward way to analyze this entire this entire situation.